Hello everyone, this is the second video in my series on the Great Learning, one of the core texts of Confucianism alleged to have been compiled by Zengzi, one of uh, Confucius' disciples. So we'll be picking up where we left off. So last time, very brief review here, we found out that the guidance or way of the Great Learning was in illustrating illustrious virtue, it was in bringing people close, bringing people together, and it's also in stopping in the utmost excellence. Okay, so let's pick up with the next line. So, first off, we have to know. Zhi. This is a verb. Okay, and then we already know zhi from the last video means to stop. Or if we take it as a noun, it can mean something like stopping point. Okay, so actually what we have here is actually a verb and then an object. And then we have a coordinator here. We know that R is a coordinator. So if we have A, R, B, it's something like A and then B. Okay, so since we have a verb in front of R, that means we're going to expect a verb on the other side. And we sort of have a verb right here. Yo. Yo means to have, possess, or to exist. Okay, and this right here is actually somewhat related to R, and you might recognize it from modern Mandarin if you uh, know Chinese at all. It is ho. A little mistake there. Ho, which means after. So what we actually have here is and then after. So then after that, after what? After knowing the stopping point. So if you remember back from the previous line, it was stopping in utmost excellence, right? So we're knowing the stopping point. So once we know, we recognize the stopping point, then we have ding, which is certainty. We have a certain certainty about what we're doing. Okay, we need to know where we're going before we go there. Right, so then we're going to talk about that certainty. Once we have that certainty, then after that, same structure that we saw here, but in this case, ding, is kind of like a stated verb. So once we're certain, to be certain, to be certain, and then after that, same thing that we saw here, nung, to be able. So it's like a conditional kind of thing. To be able. So if we have nung, and then a verb, that means to be able to verb, okay? And what is our verb? It's a stative verb, or doesn't actually necessarily have to be a stative verb, but it means something like calm, tranquil even, something along those lines. Jing. So if we put this together, once we're certain, so once we are certain about what we're doing, then we can enter into a calmness or tranquility. We are able to become tranquil, to be calm or tranquil, right? Okay, so so far, once we know the stopping point, the utmost excellence, what that is, and we start, we've established that, we establish it, we are certain, and then we are able to become calm. We're able to calm ourselves, calm our mind. Once there is a calm, so we have calm, and then after that, same thing that we've seen before in these previous two statements, then we are able, again, nung, same, same able that we saw here, to an. Somewhat similar to jing, p 
peace, to be peaceful. Okay? Again, because of the closeness of those words, it's, it's really something that you have to pick apart as you read further, as you see people use Jing and use An, so use calmness and tranquility and use peace or peacefulness. You can start to differentiate what those two things mean. So Jing is kind of like quiet and tranquil, whereas An is something more like peaceful and safe almost, okay? But I'll let you develop your own concept of that. That's my own reading and the kind of way that I conceptualize it in my mind. But it depends on the person that's reading the text. So now here, we have the same exact thing again. In this case, we've, we're now peaceful. So we've known the stopping point. We become certain of it. We become tranquil. We, be, uh, tran we become tranquil. We become peaceful. Now that we are peaceful, then we are able to lu to contemplate or to think to contemplate so now we're able to contemplate okay and what do we get for contemplating once we are able to contem contemplate then after that we are able same exact structure that we've seen do obtain to obtain. So now what exactly we're obtaining depends on how you read the text. It could be that we go back to the previous line. If we look back, we were basically talking about the guidance of the great learning. We're talking about what the great learning is. So perhaps this process that we go through here of knowing that end, knowing the utmost excellence, becoming certain, becoming tranquil, becoming peaceful, then contemplating, in that we obtain the great learning or the guidance of the great learning. That's the way I'll read it. But if you have another way of, read it, of reading it, please let me know in the comments. Now next time, actually no, let's just get this done right here. I think we have time to get through this line as well. So after we've gone through that process, then we see some statements about that guidance again. And maybe this will inform our, our reading of the previous line as well. So here we have Wu. Wu is like objects, all kinds of material things. Object, objects in this case. So objects. We already saw Yo before, right? So Yo means to possess or to have. Ben and Mo. This is an actually very interesting pair of characters because at the base meaning, Ben means root and Mo means branch. And this is something that gets used a lot as a metaphor throughout lots of different Chinese texts, whether it's philosophical, administrative, any kind of text really. And so it can mean like a reason and a result or it can mean something like a beginning and an end. A beginning and an end, or a uh, origin and ending point. Something along those lines. And that actually goes together with our next statement. Shi is like affairs, so like more like events. Affairs or events. They have something as well. They have zhong endings and shi beginnings. Endings and beginnings. So actually, if we take these together, we see that material things, objects, they have beginnings and ends, roots and branches. And events, so non-material things, things that pass, they're just basically defined by periods of time. 
they also have beginnings and endings. Now here, they actually use the words that are for generally used for beginning and ending, while the objects, they use the kind of metaphor form of ben and more, roots and branches. Interesting. But basically just parallel kinds of structures talking about two different things, and maybe even drawing comparison between material objects and intangible events or affairs. Now we actually see a statement that goes together. I'm going to first talk about this character right here, which is actually a grammar point for us. Duh. It means and then. Very similar to um, R, another character. So similar to R, but it's also often used in the sense of if, oops, if dot 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 then. A lot of times we'll see dot 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 the dot dot dot. And that basically means if the then something else. Okay? So we actually see a correlation or a coordination between these two different statements. So let's go into reading it knowing that. So we already know this character to know. Now, this one is another grammar point, which is a nominalizer. Nominalizer. Something like that which. Okay. Then we have two characters, xian and ho. We already know ho from earlier. Xian means before. Ho means after, which we saw in the previous line. Okay, so if we take so and put it in front of a noun or even a verb, it becomes that which. It's actually more common for the verb. That which verb. Or Perhaps in the case of like a noun, it's something like that. Mm, I wouldn't say that which for that. It's more like all of the things. So, um, so for example, shu, like book. It means something like all of the books. All the books. But in this case, these are actually acting as verbs, that which came before and that which comes after. So if we put so in front of xian ho, before and after, it's all that which came before and comes after. So when we take this together as a, as a compound noun, a noun phrase, this is one noun, with our verb to know, it becomes if you know that which came before and will come after, the then, jin dao yi. Jin means to be close or even to get close. Get close to what? Get close to dao. Dao again being either way or perhaps guidance. So that brings us all the way back to the first line where we were talking about the guidance or way of the great learning. So basically what we see is that objects have beginnings and ends, affairs or events have beginnings and ends, and if you learn, if you know that which comes before and that which comes after, then you can get close to the way or the guidance. The guidance of what? The guidance of the great learning. Then lastly, just to finish off, we have this character here, E. This is often at the end of a long statement and basically concludes by saying, and that's all. 
it often signals to the reader that now I've finished my explanation, right? So now there's more in the text, but he's basically signaling to us that this is the end of this thought, and the next thought is going to pick up on something new. So that's a good point for us to stop. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. We'll pick up with the next paragraph of the Great Learning. Thanks, everyone.